What's good, y'all? Thanks for stopping back through to kick it with me. We are here for another episode review of The Real Housewives of P.O.T.O. Mac, okay? The Real Housewives of Potomac. Oh, okay. Um... So, it wasn't a whole, whole lot going on in this episode. It was just sort of, eh, you know, one of those episodes. But this is where Candy Ace meets the rest of the ladies. Because she had already met Monique and she knew Ashley. So, in this episode, she meets Giselle robin for the second time <laughs> giselle robin karen um and the rest of them okay so they start out with robin i mean why the fuck why i keep saying robin um i be getting robin and giselle mixed up sometimes but anyway so it's ashley giselle and Candace at yoga and this is Candace's first time meeting Giselle all right and so they do the yoga and then they start talking about Candace and Chris getting married Ashley's like yeah he's a bald white man just like Michael and then somehow Candace's goofy ass ends up saying that his dick is brown with a pink tip. Listen, y'all, I'm still not quite sure about a, um, Candace, but I don't really see her being on here um, coming back for the next season because she not really adding a whole lot. Like... Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments, but she is just really goofy and immature, you know, and just kind of sort of like, it seemed to me like Bravo just threw them a piece of meat with Candace. Like she, she just was thrown in there to be torn apart by the vets. I don't know. That's just my, my opinion. But anyway... Her goofy ass mentions that her man's dick is brown with a pink tip and that they're part of the Magnum Club. Now, I don't know in what world you supposed to be amongst a group of bitches that you don't know describing your man's dick, you know? And that's why I say she goofy because that was just stupid. Um, and then they start talking about <clears throat> prenups. And Giselle sticks her two cent in telling this girl that she don't know that she needs to get a prenup. And she said, um, what's her name? Candace said, well, yeah, I, I'm the one with the money. And, you know, Chris don't have a whole lot. So, there's, there's an imbalance. And... To me, it seems like somewhere down the line, that might be a problem somewhere um, after they get married because Candace's attitude just toward Chris in general, to me, seems like she feels like she is a slight bit above him, you know, just by the way she talks about him because she, she said when he when he starts drinking he starts acting like a brown man so that was that was offensive she said it, it's not offensive to him and i guess i i kind of sort of get what she was trying to say but she's goofy so it just came out like that but then she also later on when she and chris are out to eat she brings up to him about the prenup and Chris's attitude is just like, yeah, well, I came with nothing. I'll leave with nothing. I'm here for you. So 
I think Chris is genuine, although I, on the flip side, don't think he has a problem at all with the fact that Candace and her family um, got money, okay, and they don't mind spending it. So, um, so yeah. But then back to what I was saying about the whole dynamic between Chris and Candace. Candace mentions to him that, you know, they're going to be doing the whole bubble soccer thing, getting to know the ladies <clears throat> and everything. And she says to him, don't be jumping in no water and shit. Okay. But because he jumped off the balcony at Chris's birthday party when they was at Chris and Monique's house, she had an attitude about that. So now she feels like she needs to reiterate and tell him, don't be doing no shit basically to embarrass me. So I just get the sense that, excuse me, y'all, I'm turning, turning the corner. Um, I just get the sense that she's, she's, she's what my grandmother would say, half a looting and Chris ain't, you know, so she, she um she love she want to be with him and she love him maybe it's because he giving her some bomb d because she always talking about it but she like um so i'm gonna marry this bomb d um but i'm just gonna nag him to death about getting him to be something he's not okay so i don't know that just seemed to me like you you don't do that to your man. You know what I'm saying? If, if you are embarrassed by your man, then it's a bigger problem. So don't be trying to tell me how the fuck to act when we go out. Like, you know. But anyway, that was that. He said he didn't have a problem signing the prenup. So she said, okay, cool. He checks my boxes. And that's all the more reason why I know he's the one for me. Because he didn't have an issue with the prenup and then again i'm gonna say that candace is goofy because she sits down at the table with him and she's adjusting her damn titties inside of her dress and face just all turned every which way adjusting your titties at the table girl <laughs> you want chris about how he acting um you could you could fix your titties in the bathroom girl so anyway karen I really appreciate Karen's interaction with her daughter, um, Raven. Raven is going back to college. She's about to start her junior year. And y'all excuse the son. I'm sorry. But anyway, so yeah, she's about to start college. And Karen and Raven are just, you know, preparing her, getting her ready they sit down and talk and I really like the conversation that Karen had with Raven and how she told her she's a solid little sister that was really really endearing and it's cool to hear shit like that from from your mom you know what I mean um that kind of is just reassuring and I like that so Raven goes off to drive back to college and her little rent a car and everything that was cute so then we have Sharice and Monique over at Monique's house and this is where Monique shows Sharice the invitation that um that Candace sent for the bubble soccer and Sharice's snooty ass immediately starts picking it apart, talking about it looks like a kid's party invitation and whatever. So, um, I don't know. I just was, why? I don't know why Sharice is even around, but she and Monique have become so-called, quote-unquote, good friends, according to Monique. We'll get to that in a minute, why I said that. But <clears throat> that's the party invitation, so they're going to go. Um, 
and then once again Monique brings up how Giselle at the garden party was stumbling over her words when she was reading an excerpt from her book talking about she need a um, ghost reader so whatever shady bitches um, Monique's kids are absolutely beautiful they are so so damn cute the little baby girl she fought it <laughs> but anyway I really like to see the ladies interact with their kids that's something I could tolerate so now over at Robin and the Wani Wan's house <laughs> the Wani Wan they are is Robin Giselle Karen and Sharice so they're painting one of the rooms in the house and um they're just chatting okay and Giselle of course brings up that she met Candace and at that point no one else has met Candace so she brings that up um and she brings up the whole brown dick situation okay and I don't know it's just stupid you know but at the same time it's like why are they even talking about that shit because but it's because Candace brought it up so that was she <laughs> this dumb bitch Giselle draws her illustration of a penis on the wall <sighs> dumb and Sharice this is why I was saying that she's quote Monique's friend she goes back and tells Robin I mean damn it I keep getting their asses mixed up. She goes back and tells um just damn it y'all. I'm sorry. I get it together in one second. So, Sharice goes back to Giselle and tells Giselle what Monique said about her needing a ghost reader. Okay? And, of course, Giselle was like, oh, she's stupid and petty or stupid and dumb or some shit. Um, but, again, it's shade. And that's what they do. None of them are really, in my opinion, IMO. None of them are really friends because they talk shit about each other. And it's just that. And Robin brings up Ashley and says... The reason why she gets so upset with Ashley is because Ashley doesn't understand what it took for her and Juan to get to the place that they're at. Now, I'm sure Ashley probably does not know that um, at that time, she Ashley didn't know that Robin was the reason for their financial hardship. Okay, so I don't care how you slice it. Ashley shouldn't be speaking on robin and juan's situation i just i just don't think so that's not her business so and it's not like she and robin grew up together as you know childhood friends going back to beepers and pay phones or nothing they don't fuck with each other like that so ashley doesn't have any place to be talking to robin about what she has going on now on the flip side robin Y'all know I drink my smoothies in the morning. Excuse me. Robin knows that that shit is out of whack. Okay. Um, and I just say that because the look on Robin's face most of the time. Robin seems checked out more often than not. And when she is like, for instance, in this particular scene, when she is amongst people that she feels like she can... Um, kind of sort of be herself with she still seems withdrawn she still seems like she's not 
she she seems unhappy and i think that's because she knows that her situation ain't right and she's struggling with that within herself but it just is what it is but still i say out of all them ladies robin to me is the most likable you know she doing some it's some stupid shit going on but it is is what it is and i mean truth be told i've been there not specifically dealing with robin's exact circumstances but as far as like doing some shit that i know i don't have no business doing involving a man so it is just what the fuck it is so robin you know robin she all right with me um okay so let's see what else the the soccer event the bubble soccer event girl karen shows up with maddie patty y'all matty patty she shows up with good old matt from the press conference a, a while back but <laughs> I guess she felt like she couldn't show up by herself. So she had to bring somebody. And she damn sure won't gonna bring Ray's decrepit ass. Cause his ass can't get out there in no damn big bubble and play soccer. And Karen didn't do it either. Now, I don't remember. I'm doing this from memory, y'all. I didn't take any notes. So I don't know if Matt. I think Matt did get out there and play soccer so anyway karen that's her little accessory she treats him like an accessory um so they all get together and again the brown dick comes up and um but chris is there okay and robin asks candace how would you feel if your man was amongst his buddies talking about your coochie? And she like, well, if he was praising it, then it wouldn't be a problem. That, I'm Listen, don't be talking about me, period. That's all I'm saying. I mean, it's one thing to be like, you know, you, you out with your mans and shit and you be like, um, yeah, I got to roll. I got to go get my girl. I got to go pick her up from work. Okay, cool. But, nigga, don't be talking about me talking about some, yeah, she got a mole right next to her left pussy lip, you know, and um, her clit big and, you know, she keep it shaving. What the fuck kind of shit is that? So, Candace is, Candace is just a doofus to me. And furthermore, the reason why I say that is because she set her ass after the event was over, um, after they finished playing soccer and they sat down to eat. She is sitting at the table discussing her finances, like letting them dig into her business about what she, what her mother, what candace's mother pays for what chris pays for and so on and so forth and she actually sat there and answered them i don't know what's wrong with people just telling people to mind their own goddamn business you know but i i'm looking at it like i think candace may think um may think she has something to prove to them or she wants to fit in but even still girl they sat there and talked about you know um the mother pays half of the mortgage and chris and candace pay their portion to equal the whole um girl i just and then they and, and they try to laugh it off talking about the girls the vets are hazing the new girl talking about candace so the vets are hazing candace but shit girl if i gotta I, i'm not going through all that bullshit to be friends with nobody 
Okay? I'm not going through all that shit. Either we vibe or we don't. So, fuck that shit. Sitting at the table talking about your man's dick and talking about your finances amongst all these bitches. Child and Karen's damn wig start eating her head. Okay. Um wasn't no napkins. The food was late and shit. So whatever the fuck ever. Okay. But anyway, y'all. I believe that was the end of the episode. Um I was trying to watch it this morning as I was or watch it for a second time this morning as I was getting ready to leave the house. So, I may have left some shit out. If I did, I'm sorry. Um, leave it in the comments. If I did, leave it in the comments how you feel about the episode. What y'all think about Candace and her longevity on this show? If there is going to be any longevity for her. I don't see it. I don't see it, but I guess they felt like they needed to bring somebody in since Sharice, um, I guess, isn't a permanent fixture anymore. Although, I mean, she's been on quite a few episodes so far. So, I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think, okay? And I will holler at y'all in the next review.